Good morning, everyone. It's Karen Hooley and welcome to Live Wednesday. I'm so excited you guys are here. I hope um, you guys had a great week. And those of you in the United States, I hope you had a great uh, Labor Day weekend and got to relax. I did a little bit. Um, I did do a little bit of crocheting, but pretty much I tried to stay away from my computer mostly. I should say I did answer a few emails along the way, but um, other than that, I pretty much, um, you know, did stuff with my husband and around the house and stuff like that. So um, I hope you guys are, are doing well. I'm going to head over to the chat room and see who's all here. We have Linda, who's here with Daisy. And she also um, says hello to everyone. And don't forget to smash the thumbs up button, the like button. I'd really appreciate that. That really helps with the algorithms out there. Good morning, um, Stephanie. Um, I'm so glad you're here. And I have Ellie Mae. Good morning. And Renee is here. Good morning, Renee. And Kelly's here. Good morning. Good to see you. So glad you guys are all here. Um, it's going to be, I, I have a little bit of a shorter show today, um, unless you guys have a lot of questions for me. And I forgot to put the banner up. Um, if, oops, wrong banner, this one. <laughs> If you have a question for me um, on the topic, the topic, I'm going to put the topic here really quick, is of crochet blanket sizes. Um, it's, I went through a bunch of stuff um, that I've gotten over the last year or so, um, just not just through um, the questionnaires that I send through my newsletter, but um, emails that I've been saving. And a lot of people have been say, asking me about blankets lately. Um, not just lately, but within the last year, I would say. Um, not knowing what size to make if they, you know, they have a stitch pattern or they're using squares and they're making something um, themselves for a particular person, a baby, a, you know, an adult, a, a bed that they want to cover. So that's today's topic. Um, if you have any questions about today's topic um, or any questions for me in general, um, make sure in the chat you type the letter Q, a space in your question, and that'll allow me to scoop up the questions and put them on the screen. And um, and we can talk about that stuff. But before we get into the topic, I'm gonna take that back off the screen here. Um, I am going to um, let you know, I am doing a giveaway. And unfortunately, I forgot to grab the sample. So I'm showing you on my website what we're giving away today. Since we're talking about blankets, I thought what I would do is give away a copy. Oops, wrong one. Let's do, nope, that's not going to do it either. Um, let's do it that way. There we go. My Ocean Throw uh, blanket pattern. Um, it's it's this actually a simple pattern set of worsted weight yarn. It is, I used a Vanna's, um, Vanna's Choice for this one. Um, I call it the Ocean Throw because of the colors I used. And also I used a zigzag stitch that kind of gives you you know, kind of a wave look to it. It's not really a wave. It's not like a, a chevron blanket or anything like that, but it is a wave pattern. So if you would like to win a copy of this pattern, um, the only person who is not eligible is Charlene Mendoza because she won last week, but everybody else is, is welcome to enter. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing this screen and I'm gonna show you the other screen. In the chat box, you are going to type, where is it? There it is. You are going to type hashtag ocean. <laughs> I know I was be, I was not very um, creative this morning. So hashtag ocean um, is a, what you can um, type in to win a copy of this pattern. And for those of you who are new um, and this might be your first time at my uh, on my lives here, what I'd like to do is um, uh, I like to do a giveaway. And what I do is when you win, you get a copy of the pattern in a digital format in your account on my website. So if you don't have an account on my website, um, what I need you to do is email me and I will set up an account for you because you can't just, the only way you can create an account on my website is by purchasing a pattern or something like that, because I have a a rewards program that goes in that it, uh, that is involved in all of that. So I don't allow anybody to just create an account. Um, so um, type in hashtag ocean. If you have an account, I will put it in your account. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off the screen now. 
And um, we're going to go ahead and get started. But I see there's a lot of people who popped in since I was talking here. Um, let's see who's here. Teresa's here. Good morning, Teresa's. Good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. It's been a little bit. And Dawn is here. Good morning, Dawn. I'm glad you were able to make it. And I, I bet you recognize that blanket. That's a fun blanket. Um, and I see a lot of people typing in their hashtag oceans in there. So I'm so glad you're here, everybody. Um, I'm so glad that so many people want to enter to win this one. Um, so I'll bring it back up um, shortly um, for those who might pop in later. But I'm going to go ahead and um, I just thought, Teresa, it's been a hot minute. You've had a busy, busy summer, I'm sure, with car shows and things like that. So um, I'm just glad you were able to make it. Okay, so I am going to add this cool little screen here. I'm going to put myself at the bottom so that... Um, you guys can see um, some tips here. Now, I am going to um, go through this real quick. This is going to be really, really quick. Um, so if you guys have questions about blankets or um, anything, make sure you ask me some questions and I'll scoop those up after I go through this. But um, a lot of people will go through their stitch dictionaries and they see some a stitch pattern that they really, really like and they don't know exactly what to do with it um or they think oh this would make a really good blanket or a good scarf even or something like that and they just create a chain and start going and then they realize oh my gosh i don't know what size i need to make this or this might be too big for my toddler or oh <laughs> oh this is i'm not gonna fit on a, a, a you know king size bed or something like that so um i get that question a lot and I want to know after after I do this little short presentation on sizing, on sizes for blankets, I um, want to um, I want you to let me know if you would like me to create like a PDF that um, you can download that you can keep with all this information that I'm going to share with you for sizes. Um, this is just basic information on sizes. So um, the first first one I want to talk about is babies. Um, because, you know, I have a new grandson, so um, babies are on my brain. Um, but baby sizes are kind of the first first place I want to go. Um, so I'm going to take, actually, I'm going to take myself off the screen here really quick so that you can read everything. So there are, what, every three, six, nine different sizes, really, that you can associate with babies. Um, some of these sizes can go, you'll see as we go further into this. Um, and I did this in inches. So if you use the metric system, um, if I do choose to make a, a, a PDF, I'll put the metric sizes on here as well. Um, but I just did this as in inches just to make it um, easy for me to read and sh for you guys to see. Okay, so loveys. Um, loveys is something I never heard of until recently. And loveys are blankets for babies that um, are small, that they can just like cuddle. You know, sometimes babies like to cuddle their blankets. And this is something that's small, that it doesn't allow them to um, choke themselves or smother themselves a little bit. You know, or, I mean, you still have to watch them, but it's something small. So that's usually a 12 by 12 square. It's just something because I know... Um, a lot of children, um, when I was growing up, I don't know if you, I'm, I'm going to age myself here, but I don't know if you guys remember those blankets that were kind of flannel and they had the satin around the edges. And a lot of kids used to wear out the satin because they would just um, worry with their fingers on the satin. Well, that's kind of what a lovey is for. So um, I, that's something I didn't, didn't know. And then the security blanket is for the larger baby and the toddler to hold. It's the same idea as the levy. And that's 14 inches by 17 inches. These are just standard measurements. I mean, if you're off a little bit when you're making something, um, but usually what you want to do is um, with these swatches, you want with these blankets, I should have prefaced this before I started going into this, is always do a gauge swatch so that you know how many stitches you need to make them these sizes. I mean, if you're off by half an inch or an inch, either direction, it doesn't really matter. But um, but these are 
the generalities for what size things should be. Okay, so for strollers, you want 30 inches by 35 inches. Um, that gives it, makes it big enough that you can use it, you know, a, a lot of women like to cover the top of a stroller. So you could do that. Um, it's also short enough that it's not gonna get caught in the wheels. So that's something to think about. And a receiving blanket is 40 by 40. Usually receiving blankets are square. Um, so 40 by 40 inches. Um, so that's something to think about. And then it's cradles. Um, I think about this because cradles are, it, my dad made a cradle when my son was born um, or be, right before my son was born. And that the cradle is meant to, to pass down through the family. So my son and my daughter both, both slept in it and now my grandson's sleeping in it. So um, there's two different sizes of cradles out there. Um, the smaller ones are usually, um, I, I haven't seen a small one in a long time, but when I was researching sizes, um, small and large both came up. So um, I thought I'd better put both sizes. Um, the cradle that my, my kids have is the large cradle, but the small is 15 inches by 30 inches and the large is 18 by 33 inches. Um, so the, uh, for the cradle my kids had, um, I would use the large size, just so you guys know. Um, for a crib, it's 36 inches by 54 inches. A toddler blanket, so like for a toddler bed or for a um, just a toddler to wrap themselves up in, it's 42 by 52. Um, swaddles are 48 inches by 48 inches. And actually, um, having a grandson who got a lot of swaddles um, from uh, for shower gifts, that is about right. Um, I had to I had to really think about that one because that's a pretty big size for a baby. But then when I realize how you swaddle them up, that is, that's pretty much the size that you need. So um, those are the basics there for, for, for babies and toddler blanket. It would be in there too. Um, I'm seeing that um, uh, you guys are asking questions or, or commenting. So before I even move on to other sizes, I want to see Renee says, uh, no, I do have a, a work in progress that I can show you. So I'll just pull that up. So I will show you that. Um, let's see. Crochet blankets are the best. I've knit a couple and don't enjoy them as much. I have two. And in fact, um, I made one for one of my godchildren, my best friend's daughter, who's one as my godchild. And um, I, it took me forever to finish that blanket because I just didn't enjoy it. Crochet actually, they're faster for everything. <laughs> So, and let's see, Teresa said, oh, you would love to have, have a, a PDF that you can keep. Okay, perfect. I will do that. Ellie Mae said, I thought loveys were the ones with the hole in the middle for stuffed animals. Those are considered loveys too. But if you are just doing a straight up blanket, there's, they, there's loveys that are straight up blankets as well. So um, I was going for the straight up blankets and um, I, I know... Um, I follow a lot of um, makers who um, who do, um, well, being Catholic, do, you know, like um, blankets that have the saints for those of us who are Catholic that, you know, for their children. And they do loveys that are small with a picture of the saint on them. So, um, or, or multiple saints on them. And that's what they call them, loveys. So there's, there's a little bit of both. You can definitely have the stuffed animal in there. Um, I still have mine flannel satin baby blanket with the twisted knot up. <laughs> Maybe. Yes, I have one too. Um, my, Dave and I actually just found it when we were, I don't know what we were doing, but we, we found my old pink one that I had. Um, it was already cut. Um, my mom probably, probably cut a piece out of it for something. And then she, she gave it to us because it was mine. And we use, we use blankets a lot for covering furniture and things like that when we're moving. And so um, I just feel mine too. <laughs> so um, it's a scrap. It's in your jewelry box. Mine's bigger than that. Mine's probably about three quarters because there's a big chunk, a big square cut out of mine. <laughs> um, Linda said she would love a PDF with this info. Very helpful. Okay, cool. Um, Stephanie says she'd love a PDF. Hi, Charlene. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're here. And Ellie Mae says hello too. Okay, so um, I will, since you guys are all saying you'd love a PDF, what I will do 
is in the next week or two, I will get something put together. I'm going to make it look nice so that it's something that even if you wanted to laminate it, you could. I'm going to put myself back on the screen here really quick. Um, something that you could laminate um, and keep in your, your project bag or keep with your stitch dictionaries or something like that. Um, it might take me a little bit, um, but once it's available, I'll let you guys know. Um, I'm going to write that down really quick. I Okay. All right. So you guys are interested in that. So I'm, I'm, I might even um, make it as a special thing for my newsletter subscribers too. So um, I'm going to be talking about my newsletter in just a minute. So um, be stay tuned. Um, okay. So next slide. All right. So we talked about babies. Now we're going to talk children and adults um, because um, a lot of these sizes will work for both children and adults. Um, so we're gonna go from there. So let's talk about lapgans. Lapgans used to be really huge when I first got on the internet um, back in the early in the early to mid 90s um, in crochet groups. Everybody was making lapgans, and those are blankets that sit on your lap, like when you're watching TV or something like that. That aren't too big. You you don't have to. You can't wrap yourself up into them, but it just kind of keeps you warm. Um, on, you know, your legs and your lap warm. Um, and that's 40 inches by 48 inches. Um, small throws and large throws. Now, I'm, I'm a fan of large throws. <laughs> um, small throws seem, I mean, if it's a smaller person, you know, like my daughter is just five foot, I'd probably make her the small throw, which is a 52 inches by 60 inches. But I tend to like bigger blankets that, you know, you can cuddle up in, you can wrap yourself up in it, you can be a burrito in, and those are 60 inches by uh, 72 inches. And then I thought I would give you some sizing for um, bed sizes, because a lot of people like to make blankets to put at the foot of the bed that you can just like pick up when you're sleeping, when you're chilly, and you can, it, it'll cover the whole bed. And if you're someone like me who likes to roll a lot, you wanna use the whole bed, so the whole bed is covered. <laughs> so um, for a tw twin size bed, it's 59 inches by 85 inches. Full size is 74 inches by 85 inches. A queen is 80 inches by 90 inches. A king is 96 by 90 inches. And then a California king is, um, 92 inches by 94 inches. So those are literally all the sizes that are out there for blankets that are standards. I mean, you don't have to follow these sizes. I mean, you could make a twin size, you know, a 74 by 85 piece. The length is the same. You could just um, want to add some width so it hangs over the bed. You can you know, if you want to make um, a small throw a little narrower so that it, it works for a, a really thin person, um, you know, it's not so overwhelming, you could make it 40 inches by 60 inches. You don't have to follow these but exactly, but these are, these are just standard sizes. So um, anybody have any questions about this? I'm gonna go ahead and take that off the screen and, um, and see if anybody has any questions. I see Linda is chatting about her, um, the teddy bear pattern in a baby blanket, um, an extra square with the teddy bear, like the pattern in a baby. Oh yeah. See, there's, there's things like that. Um, she threw, that was not a very nice thing to do. Obviously. Um, I would have used it. <laughs> if someone had given me something like that, I would have like, Oh my gosh. Yes, see, they like a corner of their blankets, and and sometimes you, when you make um, make things, you know, this is one of the things, um, Linda, you, the story she she said to you, uh, or this whole story. I'm not going to put up the last one there, but this is why um, I, a lot of crocheters say that you should always crochet things for people who will appreciate things. Um, so, I mean, getting a baby blanket and um, uh, to someone that, that might be a friend, um, that uh, is fine. But when you, something like this woman, you know, throwing at you the, the, the lovey, I guess, is really what it is because that's somebody who likes that to, um, you might, that baby might've liked the lovey to, to be tactile and to, to like, you know, worry it a little. Um, 
I am very specific with who I crochet things for. I don't mind making blankets for all my nieces and nephews and, you know, friends that are having babies and things like that. But when there's little things like that, where, where it's something a little, a little extra special, um, it only the people I know in, you know, in my family, my children, my husband, um, I have a, uh, my best friend, <laughs> you know, if, if, you know, if she asks me to do something and she knows what, what goes into what I do. Um, so you have to be careful with that. So I, I'm a person that says, if you're going to make something <laughs> for someone, they need to be worthy. <laughs> so, um, you'd be very careful. I mean, that, that I have a giving heart and I want to make everybody everything, but I've learned over the years not to, uh, to be very selective in who I make things for. Okay. So I see that Kelly has a question. Do these measurements include some blankets that go over all the sides of the bed? Yes. For the blank, for the, the adult sizes with the, the twins, that gives you a little extra to go. It doesn't necessarily hit the floor, but it does go over the side of the bed. Now, the one thing I have learned with blankets <laughs> is that even if when you, when the bank blanket is on the bed without people in the bed, it may go over the side, but sometimes the length is not enough for like, you know, even a king size bed. I know I have a, I have a, a, just a regular blanket, not even a crocheted blanket. That's a king size blanket. But when both my husband and I are in bed, it doesn't always hit the sides or it doesn't even, you know, one of us might not have it going over the edge. <laughs> so, and I tend to be the person that steals the blanket. So it's always on my side that, that has the edge and has more over the edge than the other side. So you could add inches, you could by adding, you know, maybe an extra couple, three rounds of edging or something like that. Um, that's, but, but if you were just dressing the bed without, you know, sleeping in the bed, they, they do hang over the sides. It just wouldn't hit the, the floor necessarily. Teresa says, I'm very selective who I make handmade things for. Yes. And I think everyone should be. Um, that woman asked me to make the blanket and the baby loved it. Good. Oh, there you go. There you go. I drew, um, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Um, they, I was, as I was talking um, earlier, I will be making a PDF in the next couple weeks. And as soon as that PDF is ready to go and is ready to download, um, I will let you guys know. But I also will, um, it'll probably go to my newsletter subscribers first. So if you haven't subscribed to my newsletter, you might want to do that um, because newsletter subscribers get everything first. So just so you guys know. Um, hi, Judy. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Um, you just missed me going through um, standard sizes for blankets. <laughs> I and I like I just said, I'm going to do a PDF um, that you can download with all that information. And I will do it in both um, US, uh, you know, inches and metrics. So um, don't worry about that. It'll be in both. Um, so if anybody is concerned about that. Um, also, I am going to since I've got some new people here, I'm doing the giveaway again today, and I want to show everybody what I'm giving away. Um, I am giving away a copy of my, oh, because we're talking about blankets, my Ocean Throw blanket. Um, this is a picture. Of, oops, I should, I'm going to take myself off the screen. And I'm going to go back because I scrolled instead of, there we go. That's the pattern I'm going to give away. Um, it's the Ocean Filler Blankets done in worsted weight yarn in a zigzag stitch. And it's done in, in the pattern that you don't have to cut the yarn to change colors. You just, it's called the ABC. Um, knitters use it a lot where you do color A, color B, color C, and then color A, color B, color C, color A, color B, color C. And you don't have to, you carry up the yarn. And when you're done, you do an edging that covers the carry up so nobody has to weave in all those, all those ends. So if you're interested in winning that, um, that blanket, I need to share a different screen. You are going to type in, hang on one second. It takes me a second here to do this. You are going to type in hashtag ocean. If you type in hashtag ocean in the chat room, you will be entered to win the blanket. Um, the only person who is not eligible to win is Charlene. I'm sorry you won last week. So I'm so glad um, 
you popped in. To, so for me to say that again, but if, if you're interested in winning a copy of that pattern, I will do it digitally in your account on my website. If you do not have an account on my website um, and you're the winner, um, I will have you email me and I'll create an account for you and, and put it in, in there for free. And you'll get a notification from my website um, uh, telling you it's there. And the reason I do it this way is so that you, you want it fair and square. So I want you to always have it available so you can have a place on my account to always download it. Because a lot of people will download a pattern, print it out, lose the pattern, lose where they they saved it, and then they need another copy. And so I want to be sure that you can always get a copy of that pattern. So that's why I do it the way I do. Make sure you put the hashtag. I saw, saw Deborah come in. Make sure you put the hashtag in there. You can't just have the ocean. Otherwise, it doesn't register. So um, make sure you do that. And I just saw Pat came in. Good morning, Pat. I'm so glad you're here. I think a lot of people late today. That's OK. Um, Deborah has been making a lot of blankets, so this is good information. I'm so glad. And good morning, Deborah. I'm glad you're here. Um, and thank you, Judy, for letting her know. You have to have that hashtag there. Um, okay. I am going to stop sharing that for a second. Um, so I am pretty much done. Anybody have any questions about blankets before I... I'll show you what my work in progress. And okay. All right, I am currently working on a mosaic crochet blanket that will have an edging applied. Is there a general rule of thumb how many stitches to go into along the sides of the blanket? Um, it depends on the, on the length of the stitches. Um, so like double crochet, because um, I just saw that you posted that you're using double crochet the whole way. Um, I usually, my rule of thumb, and it depends on the weight of the yarn too, um, but my rule of thumb is if I'm using worsted weight yarn, I, I would say DK or worsted. I put two per double crochet, but I don't always necessarily put them into the double crochet. I may do one in the double crochet and then one in where the two double crochets meet from the rows on the sides of the rows. Um, if I'm working across the, 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 the top of the blanket or the, um, the bottom, I always just do one, one stitch per stitch at the bottom and the top, but on the sides, it's usually my rule of thumb, but that's in my gauge. So if, if I'm using somebody else's gauge, it might be three, no, three stitches. It might be only one. It depends on what this, what the stitch is, what the weight of the yarn is. And, um, and in your gauge, your gauge, how loose of a crochet you are, how tight you of a crochet you are. I tend to be more, with blankets, I tend to be more on the kind of neutral. I'm not tight and I'm not loose. So two usually works for me, but that is kind of my rule of thumb. Um, you're using fingering weight. In fingering weight, huh, good question. Um, in fingering weight, it, it depends. It depends on, on the pattern. Um, if they don't give you a stitch count for the blanket, if you're working off of a pattern, um, I would, I would just play until you figure out what the stitch, what the stitch counts are, um, what works better for you, what doesn't buckle, what doesn't seem too tight and pull the side and make it, you know, start to shrink and that kind of thing. Um, I would start with the, with the rule I have of two. And then if that's too much, go, you know, do less. And, um, if, uh, or if, yeah, if so, and you can also do, I've, I've had with, with fingering weight on other things that I have made, sometimes I will do a combination of one and two. So maybe every other stitch will have two double crochets and every other stitch will have, I mean, one, one stitch, two stitches, and then every other will have one. It depends on, again, your, your, your tension on that, especially it, I, that's one thing I don't like a lot, that a lot about blankets that are online because a lot of designers don't, especially the free ones, don't give you stitch counts for the edging. They just say evenly space. Now, if you notice on my blankets, I will always say evenly space X number of crochets, uh, double crochets across or single crochets across when on the first round, um, and that is because 
either I have an edging that I need to land in a certain spot. So like for the corners, especially um, when you're turning a corner on a blanket, something needs to, um, to land in the right spot in order for the, the edging, the final edging to be sitting in the right spot. Or just because I don't think it's fair to ask you to figure it out for yourself. Um, especially if you decide you don't like my edging, but you need that base round um, and you want to do something else. At least I give you a place to start with the number of stitches to do an edging that you prefer. So I hope that answers your question, Kelly. Does that make sense? It says evenly spaced. I will say evenly spaced, but I'll give you the number of stitches I want you to evenly space. So <laughs> um, there you go. <laughs> um, and let's see. Um, let's see. Having a stitch count repeat for the edges really helps. Yes, exactly. And, you know, especially with blankets that are not the, you know, not perfectly square that are rectangular. I mean, you might have 130 stitches on the top and the bottom, but on the longer sides, you may have, you know, a, a, you know, it may need 175 or 200 stitches that you need across. So um, it, it makes more sense to, to give you the stitch counts. Um, and I always say evenly spaced on my patterns because, you know, so if I say on the sides evenly spaced, you know, I'm going to say 175 stitches and single crochets across to the corner. The reason I say evenly spaced is because, again, I can't judge your gauge. So you might have to work two stitches in every stitch. You may have to do... Um, you know, two and, and a, a half of them and two, and one in another, you may have to, you may have to judge for yourself in your gauge, what, or your tension, where the stitches need to fall to make it look the way you want it to look and nice and flat and, and even. So that's, that's, that's one of the reasons why I say evenly spaced 175 stitches across to the corner. Um, because that just needs to be something that's, you you place the stitches where it looks flat for your tension. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else have a question? Okay, well I'm gonna show actually um, I'm gonna show you two things. I have to grab the other one. Hang on. <laughs> I'm gonna show you this first. It's not done. It's not done. It's still in progress. But if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you may have seen me post this on the blocking board. The stitch pattern on the blocking board. Um, this is going to be finished later this week. It's a pattern that's going to be released next year. And a lot of people wanted it to be a shawl or a sweater, but it's not a shawl or a sweater. It looks like a shawl right now, but it's not. It's actually a poncho. <laughs> so um, I am going to be finishing this up now that it's dry and in the shape it needs to be. Um, and I will hopefully have this to show you next week. Uh, again, the pattern won't be available until um, next year sometime. I'm not sure when it's going to be released, but um, it's still got to go through uh, tech editing and stitch uh, testing and, you know, photography and all of that. So um, that's the first thing. So hopefully if you've seen it, um, don't, don't go on social media now and tell people what it's going to be because I, when it's done, I want to take a picture and show people what it, what it's going to, what it actually is. So, um, but nobody got guessed poncho, which is really kind of funny. I was really surprised. Okay. Oh, and Linda likes the diamond pattern. Thank you. Okay, and then work in progress. I showed you guys this last week. This I this is all I've gotten accomplished. Um, I've gotten uh, not quite you know, 10, 11, 11 rows done. Um, it's been a busy week. Um, you guys all know that I have, um, you know, had a crazy summer with my daughter and all of her medical issues, my son and all that, or my grandson being born early and all that stuff. So I am still trying to settle in. Honestly, it has been a struggle just getting through my email and the people I have to contact. Um, 
all summer long. I've had people asking me questions. I've had shops wanting to work with me and I've had to say, you know, I can't until September. I can't until September. So yesterday I actually spent most of the day writing emails to all these people saying, okay, I'm ready to talk now. We can talk about all these different things. So um, crochet didn't happen that much. So I'm hoping this week I'll be able to finish this. For those of you who weren't here last week, um, this is my 2023 pattern of the year for my newsletter subscribers. Um, it's done in polka dot sheep yarn. Um, it is the, her tenderfoot base and in the color Aurora and Cornflower. I don't have the links today, but if you look up last week's um, uh, live stream, I have all the links there for you. Um, this is going to be the free pattern. So if you are a subscriber of, to my newsletter on January 1st, you will get this pattern for free. And, and then what happens is anybody who subscribes in 2023 will also get this pattern for free. Right now, I have Southwest Spice as my 20, 2022 pattern of the year. That is free. And um, you have until December 31st to sign up for my newsletter to get that free. If you don't get that free, um, it goes paid in January 1st. So um, you might want to check that out now because in the next, what is it? We have, what, four months left, less than four months left of the year. Within four months, you'll get two free patterns <laughs> just for being a subscriber of my newsletter. So um, if I'm going to put that link on the bottom here really quick. Um, if you're interested in subscribing to my newsletter, you can go to this link, karenhooley.com slash YT YouTube subscribe. Um, the only the reason it has the YT there is so that I know that you, you subscribe because of my YouTube videos. It just gives me an idea of where people are coming from and and um, where I should actually spend my time on doing things. So I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that. Um, and then talking about my newsletter, for those of you who are subscribed to my newsletter, yesterday I sent out a newsletter and in that newsletter was a survey. And if you haven't already done the survey, I really, 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 really need you to do the survey. Um, I've had a couple questions on it and I thought I'd address them here. I'll probably uh, mention uh, a couple things about it um, in my new next newsletter. Um, but the survey is mostly either check boxes or multiple choice where you can select one only. And there's a section in there on virtual classes. Okay. And it's about times for virtual classes. Now, what I did not say on that, that survey about virtual classes or those times is that those times are not just for virtual classes. They are also there for things like if I do a giveaway and a time that I can do a live stream for a giveaway, or um, if I'm going to do uh, a, a, like a crochet and coffee type Zoom call where people can just join and they bring their projects and we just have like a guild, like a guild meeting or just a sit and sit and crochet and meet other crocheters type of thing. What time of day that works for you? Those kinds of things. A lot of people have said, I don't want virtual classes, but I want all these other things. So I need to know what times of the day that you are interested in. So um, I did not word that very well. So um, I'm, I'm letting you guys know that now. So if you have not filled out that survey, this is only for newsletter subscribers. Um, I may send it out again before the end of the month because I, on, if you have, fill out the survey again by September 30th, on October 1st, I am going to pick five people who are going to win a couple little special things. So um, I'm not going to tell you what they are, um, but they, but I'm excited. So to, to offer these, but five, five people who, who, uh, finished the survey, it has to be a complete survey all the way through, um, to be in order to win. So, uh, win something. So I really, really appreciate it. If you would fill that out. Um, and it's mostly about the fact that I am, you know, next year's my 25th anniversary, um, of being a designer. And I'm starting to think about what, where I want the, uh, where I want my, crochet, design, teaching, all that to go in the future. So it's mostly about the things you'd like to see me work on, designing more patterns, um, teaching classes, live classes, virtual classes, um, 
you know, are you, do you like big events? Do you like small events? Do you not want to travel and do everything online? That kind of thing. So it helps me figure out where I need to put my, my time in the future. And the reason I'm asking the questions that I'm asking is because I know a lot of people prefer to stay home because of the pandemic. And they, they've discovered that they can take a lot more classes online and not have to wait for a full year for the next event to happen in their area or to wait till the shop has someone like me come in or things like that. So I really, really need your input. And I really, I have three open-ended questions that are optional. Um, and I have had very few people tell me what kind of classes they want. They, they literally, I mean, less than 5% of the respondents already have said, I'd like to see you do a class on X, Y, Z. I really need, if you have the time, I really need you to fill those pieces out because I can't, I mean, I can select a class, but if it's not something that's resonating with my audience, um, I don't know why I'm putting it, the time and effort into teaching that class because I don't have enough students or to actually make it run or, um, or I have no students. I've had classes that I've offered that I've canceled because, you know, people said that they wanted that class, but then nobody signed up for the class. So, and this is true whether I've done it virtually or whether I've taught live. So um, if you have a specific wants in classes, and it can be anything, it can be basic classes like beginning crochet classes, beginning Tunisian classes, something specific um, that you struggle with, or it could be more advanced classes like, um, you know, making a sweater or crocheting socks or, um, or it could even be business related if you want. I mean, I'm, I'm there, there's a designer out there, Edie Ekman, who does amazing, amazing um, business classes. So if you're interested in the business side of crochet, um, I highly recommend her, but you know, there are things within the business that she may not teach that I could definitely teach. So if there's something you, that I do that you'd like to learn about, let me know what it is. I can't guarantee that I'm going to teach all of these classes, but I need to know what direction my audience is, is going. So if you're interested in these classes, you need to take that survey. If you're not a newsletter subscriber, subscribe to my newsletter, because now that I've talked about this online, I think I better resend it to my newsletter, but I feel like that my newsletter subscribers are my people because they've been with me for the last 24 plus years, um, you know, in various forms. Some of them have been here the whole time. Some of them have just found me, you know, 10 years ago. Some of you have just found me now, but you are the ones who allow me into your inbox and um, want to know what I'm doing and what I'm working on and what I can teach and all that stuff. And so, um, that's why it's only going to newsletter subscribers. So if you're interested in filling this out and want to see more stuff from me, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. I'm going to put that, that link back up. And then I just saw that there are some comments here. Um, hang on one second. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Linda says those colors are beautiful oh, for the, um, this, this guy, this, these colors are beautiful. Uh, the colors aren't really true to, to life. They're a little brighter than what you're seeing here. I just don't have my big light here because when I first started, there were no clouds and now there's clouds. <laughs> so I apologize. Um, it's looking so dark. Deborah says she's making my shell coaster pattern using up cotton. That's awesome. I love that coaster pattern. In fact, I have I have one right here. I use it every single day. So if you guys don't know what coaster pattern she's talking about, this is my shell coaster pattern. Um, it's a free pattern on my website. So if you're interested in that, I also, I think I also have a YouTube video on this. So you might want to check that out as well. Um, let's see, what else do I have here? Linda did the survey. Awesome. Thank you for doing that. That time of day section does not have a not applicable. Um, the, the one where you pick the time that works the best for you, I don't want to have that there. That's, that's, there's a reason why that's not there. Um, the, the first question about the times has a, a not, it's something like not, not applicable for me. Um, that's so that I know who is not interested in classes pretty much. And, or at least on those days, and, but the second one is for all of the above. So that's why each day has that, 
you pick what time that day works best for you. So I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is cover all the bases for people who, who work, who don't work, are at home all the time, um, who don't travel a lot so that I have days of the week that I know that are the, the, the days that are available for most people for not just for classes, but for, um, um, uh, you know, giveaways and Zoom calls and all that kind of stuff. So um, I don't want to have a not applicable there because I hope that you would just say, okay, if I was home on this day at this time, this is the time that would work for me. Um, it doesn't mean that it, it, I mean, if you have to show up on that day or anything. So I just, I just want to make that, that aware. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you had to choose and I wanted you to choose. If, if you were home that day, this is the time of day I want, I would, would be, that was, that was absolutely done intentionally. So, um, I, I know a lot of people didn't like that, but, um, I have a reason and, and a way of crunching numbers that is different. <laughs> so that's why it's the way it is. Um, and you did the survey too. Awesome. So thank you so much, guys, for those of you who did take the survey. If, you, if you're interested in taking the survey, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. Um, um, I'm going to do a resend for that survey later on. Um, uh, so I, I, I can't resend it just to one person, unfortunately, but I will resend the survey to um, uh, uh everyone again, just as a reminder about the giveaway and all that stuff. So don't worry, you'll get another copy of it. No worries. Um, okay. Any questions, guys? I'm going to take a cup of a sip of my coffee here. Anybody have... Um, something they want to share, <laughs> anything. I mean, um, I've still got, I, I, I'm surprised I talked as long as I did. I didn't think I'd have, um, you know, 45 minutes worth of stuff to chat about, but I guess I did. So um, anything else you would like me to talk about? Okay. <laughs> um, for those of you who are part of the crochet crew, which is my pattern club, the pattern is going to drop on Monday. Um, so it'll be happening before our next live stream. Um, one of the things I'm going to be doing this week is um, also um, setting up a time where I'm going to have all of the people who are part of the crochet crew um, get on a Zoom call. You might have multiple times because we're going to talk about some, some changes that are being made. Um, so that'll be coming for those of you. If you are interested in being a part of the Crochet Crew, um, you can go to crochetcrew.karenhooley.com and find out more about it. It is going to be in its in its uh, in its state that it is right now through the end of the year. Um, you can you can join us at any time and start getting the the remainings four patterns that are left for the rest of the year um, on this first second Monday of the month, second Monday of the month. Yeah. I have to look at my calendar. Um, every second Monday of the month, I drop a new pattern for the pattern club. So if you join now, you'll get September's. And if you join anytime during the month of September, you will automatically be able to get September's pattern. If you don't join till October, you only get October through December, that kind of thing. Um, if registration is going to reopen on, or, or close on, I should not re say reopen, close on December 9th. And that'll be right before I drop the last pattern of the year. And then the crochet crew's changing for 2022 or 2023. Sorry, guys. Um, so used to saying 2022. Um, for 2023, it's the, it, it's going to be in a totally different in, uh, way of doing things and um, a way of releasing patterns because what I've discovered this year 
is that I have way too many patterns being released this year. And I can't, I can't keep up with this kind of demand for patterns, um, especially since I'm seeing already in the survey that everybody wants me to keep designing. That is the number one thing that everybody wants from me. So um, I have to find a way that is a little more, um, doable, I guess is the best thing for me to say doable for me as far as design work is concerned, especially with aging parents and a, a newborn grandson um, that all need me in one way, shape or form. So um, I, I, I'm, I'm reworking my schedule, trying to figure out ways to make things, a, keep everybody happy, but also keep me from burning out. So um that's why the crochet crew is changing. <laughs> and um, I, that, that's pretty much it for right now that I can tell you. Um, this survey is gonna help me redefine a little bit of what, what the crew is gonna be. So um, also for those of you who um, uh, are interested in being pattern testers, I am still, I still have the application open. It will be remain open. Um, so I, ch I'll check it every, around the 15th of every month, I will go through and, um, let you know if you are, I'm going to put you on the pattern testing crew or not. Um, there may be a point where I have to close it because I have too many testers, but right now I could use a few more. So if you're interested in testing patterns for me, definitely go to my website, scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see a thing that says be a pattern tester and click on that. It gives you all the information of what needs to happen and it also has a link to the application to, for being a um being a pattern tester uh linda says burning out is not allowed and yes a burning out is not allowed and i really I, i'm not so burnt out right now it's more of i my wild summer with my daughter and the grandson and her health issues and all that just kind of put me in a tailspin and i realized that I need to have an, a better way of planning for things over the year so that if something like this happens again in the future, I definitely need, um, I definitely need, um, you know, plan in place so with that I can be a little bit more flexible. So um, that's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> and Kelly says, submitted, but I didn't include picture. That works. Yes, you had already been testing for me. Yes. And if you are a current pattern tester um, and on my list, um, I, I know I haven't been very um, communicative lately, but I do have some patterns that in, in October are going to start. Um, I'm going to start testing in October. I mean, probably late September, send out a call for tests, testers. Um, that's why I'm going to start on the 15th going through people to see if they are available to, you know, are, are going to be qualified to test my patterns and be added to the crew. So make sure you do that. Kelly, you are a tester um, for me. So I'm glad you, you didn't have to send me pictures because I know your work. So don't worry about that. Um, but if you've never tested them for me before and you fill out the form, you need to put, send me pictures. Um, and the, the form explains how to do it. And also, um, for those of you who are current testers, if you would like to fill out the form, you don't have to worry about being canceled for, as, as a tester. But if you would like to fill out that form for me, I would appreciate it just so that I have every all the new information that I need from everybody there at, all in one place. So I don't have to keep going back and forth from two different um, forms. So I would really appreciate it if you did, but only if you have time, you don't have to do it, but I would appreciate it. Okay, so let's do our giveaway. I'm gonna just put that up one more time. Um, make sure that you have the hashtag ocean. Uh, oops, wrong one, giveaway, there we go. Uh, make sure if you're ready to win the, the, the um, ocean row, um, make sure you've typed in hashtag ocean. I'm going to give you five seconds and then I'm going to hit draw. So five, four, three, two, one. And let's see who our winner is. Linda, congratulations. 
I'm so excited for you. So I'm going to put you down as our winner. And I know you have an account. So um, I, I'm going to go ahead after this call or this live stream is over. I will definitely um, put that in your account. I'm so excited you won. Um, so anyway, um, congratulations. Oh, I keep forgetting how to do all of this. Hang on one second here. Ha, <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, so just to kind of sum up everything for today, I'm going to go ahead and put it together a PDF for you guys on all those blanket sizes. And I'm going to include the metric system on there as well as the inches. So um, that'll be in the next couple of weeks. Um, I am in a, in a future live stream, I will, I'll let my newsletter subscribers know about it first. And then in the future, uh, the live stream that I'll be following that, um, I will give you guys a link that you guys um, as live stream or as um, YouTubers can um, also download it since I we talked about it here first. Um, anyway, so I am um, also going to um, um, resend the, the, the survey to my subscribers. So um, if you are not a subscriber, make sure you do subscribe so that you can um, fill out my survey. And congratulations, Linda. I'm so excited that you won. I'm going to put these up here. Um, there you go. Congratulations, Linda. Okay. Um, I am going to sign off for now. If you guys have any questions for me, you guys know where to find me. I'm always around, um, you know, via email. So you guys can always go to my website and contact me. Um, or you can... Um, you know, um, you can leave a comment here in YouTube at the bottom of the straight live stream, um, especially for those of you who might be watching after the fact. Um, but other than that, I will see you next week. I think next week's topic, I've been really thinking about this. I think next week's topic is actually going to be um, uh, reading patterns a little bit. I mean, this is going to be the actual verbiage part of the pattern. Um not the, the, did I do that already? Now that I'm thinking about it, did I already do a live on, I have to go back and look now. Um, I don't want to do one on charts just quite yet. Um, but I, I, I get so many questions about people be struggling with reading the verbiage of patterns. So, um, I was thinking about doing that, but if you haven't, if I've already done that, it might change, but that it, it temporarily that is our topic for next week. I need to research that now because now I'm starting to think I may have done that, but um, I am definitely going to be back next week. Um, I hope you guys have a great week. If there's anything you guys need, you, see, I thought so. Okay. Kelly's saying I did do that. I just, I was talking about, it, I went, oh, I think I've already done that. Okay. So then I don't know what the topic is going to be. Um, I just have been getting so many questions lately. I mean, it just like within the last couple of weeks about, um, and even in my survey, please talk, teach about reading patterns. So I might actually create a, a live, either Zoom class or something like that for that. So maybe, yep, yeah, two months ago. Oh, yay. Um, Linda says she has no problem with my patterns. Yay. I'm so glad. I, I try very hard, very, very hard not to have errors. Um, every once in a while, something gets through, like um, last month's Pattern Club. <laughs> <laughs> haven't had a little issue, but um, I bet it's been fixed. So uh, let me know. Um, yay. Okay. Good, Charlene. I'm glad you got it. Perfect. And and Kelly says, yep, two months ago. So I honestly, I honestly thought I did. I just couldn't remember. Okay. I'm going to pick another topic. <laughs> I'm just going to have to start sending these people who are asking me these questions to that live stream is what I'm going to have to do. Okay. So any, everybody have a great week and a great weekend. Um, I'm still a little feeling a little um, off. You guys probably can tell here at the end of the video, especially I'm really tired. Um, I'm, I'm, I realized that um, dealing with my daughter so soon after my last cancer treatment and pushing off how I was feeling so I could focus on her was probably not the best thing. And I'm, my body's trying to bounce back. And um, even last year, last night, my husband and I talked about it a little bit that I need to start thinking about taking care of myself for a little bit. So um, I need to do that as well. <laughs> so help, hopefully next week I will be feeling better. Um, and I hope 
you guys have a great week. I'm going to have a great week because I'm going to pace myself this week. And I um, hope you have a great weekend. Um, if you have anything you need to talk to me about, you know how to contact me either here in the contacts or in the, in the chat um, or the comments below the video or go to my website at karenhooley.com and send me a message. Um, but other than that, I will see you next week. And if you have topics that you want me to talk about, I keep telling you guys, nobody uses the form. Send me a topic at karenhooley.com slash Q-N-A. You don't have to capitalize the Q-N-A um, like I did here. It just I just did that to separate it. But use karenhooley.com slash Q-N-A. Tell me what topics you'd like me to talk about. I'm going to go through my stuff again and come up with a new topic for next week. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great rest of your week. And I will see you next time.